Good morning, good afternoon, uh, depending upon where you are in the continent, um, United States of America. My name is Sanbu. I'm from the national team. I'm also the support guy for uh, North South. So today we are here for the um, information session that we are going to host for vocabulary. So we have Navneet. Now, Navneet, um, sorry, Navneet, I, I, I didn't get a recent picture of you here. Um, so I had to go with uh, what we had from scripts. Um, he, he's been our champion. Um, he has started his spelling journey as early as fourth grade. He's been a two-time championship uh, finalist at the Scripps National Spelling Bee. You might have seen him in TV. He won the 2019 North-South Senior Spelling Bee and the 2018 North-South Intermediate Vocabulary Bee. He is a volunteer uh, coach now. Uh, we do have a spelling program that we have introduced this year. So he's one of the very star volunteer coach. Um, so we are preparing next generation of spellers. Um, he volunteers uh, as a coach and also contributes to the material. He is the mem member of HOSA in a school and is passionate to take up a career in the field of medicine. He's a freshman at the Middlesex County Academy for Allied Health and Biomedical Sciences. Yeah, so there are two main divisions in NSF's vocabulary bees. So you have the junior division and the intermediate division. So junior, it's from first grade to third grade and intermediate, it's for everyone from fourth grade to eighth grade. And as given on the screen, the regionals are the the chapter competitions are going to be taking place on April 10th and May 1st. So for JBB, which is the junior B, it takes place at 2:30 p.m. Eastern time, and for IVB, which is the intermediate competition that takes place from uh, that that starts at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So as you can see again, there are two phases for both junior and intermediate. It's going the first phase is well, it's phase one, and that's the written test. And the second phase is going to be the oral portion. Next slide. So yeah, uh, the first phase is the online written test. It has 25 words and 30 minutes. And the second phase is going to be the oral competition, which is going to be through a Zoom call. And there will be eight rounds, and there will be no spellers or no contestants eliminated. Now, that's one more thing that I want to just add is that even the, you'll stay in the same Zoom room for both phase one and phase two. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, next slide, please. Ooh, this is spelling bee. Um, so it is still applicable to vocabulary. I'm sorry about that. Let me change that. So it's the same thing yeah. for vocabulary. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, for both spelling and vocabulary, you're going to receive a thousand word list, and that's something that you can download upon registration. And there's also a structured learning program guide that tells you how to study uh, and how to divide your studying intervals and other things like that. And all the words from phase two will be coming from this, uh, this group of thousand words. So in phase one, in the written test, 10 out of the 25 words will be coming from the list. So it's very important to be extremely thorough with the list and to understand the definitions of all the words in the list because that, that'll give you 10 words out of the 25 words. There's also something else that's that I found a helpful resource for vocabulary, the NSF vocabulary B game. And that is also given up on registration. It, I believe it has multiple choice uh, questions. It's sort of like a game and it has a lot of the words from the thousand word list. and that is something that I'd recommend practicing with, and it would be extremely helpful for IVB and JVB. And all the words will be coming from Merriam-Webster's Unabridged. And that is a paid dictionary, but it has a lot of extra words compared to the free Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. The free Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, everyone has access to it. If you just go to merriam-webster.com, you'll be having, uh, you'll, you'll get access to the dictionary. So this is a sample question that they might ask at JVB. So the question itself would be the definition of the word. So a free and equal right of every person to participate in a system of government. So you have four choices 
three of which are forms of government. You have bureaucracy, democracy, alacrity, and monarchy. So like the answer for this would be democracy because in a democracy, everyone has the right to participate in the government. And the other choices you can all, they might be confusing to you. I'll just explain what the other words are. So bureaucracy that refers to all the unelected government officials. So it is sort of confusing because that is related to the general domain of government. A uh, monarchy that's another form, it's another common form of government. That's when you have one leader, the monarch, sort of taking control of the whole place. And alacrity is another word that just means eagerness. So again, the correct choice, the correct answer for this would be B democracy. Next slide, please. And this is a question that they're more likely to ask at IVB. So the definition, the the question rather would be concerned with facts or actual occurrences. So you have the options as pragmatic, antique, prismatic, and forensic. Uh, the correct answer for this would be A. So if a person's pragmatic, they pay a lot of attention to the facts and what they have at hand, and they base their decisions on the facts. Uh, antique, prismatic, and forensic would be the other choices, some of which are designed to confuse you. So antique, that's just, that refers to something that's old or that has been there for a long time. Prismatic means resembling a prism, a prism for those of you who don't know. It's sort of a device that when light, when light passes through it, it creates different colors. That's the general uh, gist of what a prism is. So prismatic means like multicolored or just relating to a prism. And forensic, that's when, uh, well, forensics is a common profession. It's, it refers to when people are trying to find the cause of someone's death or uh, it's generally used in the criminal context. So that is that. Uh, next slide, please. That's the link. So I'm just gonna bring that link over here. Give me one minute. So that's the link there. Um, you you wanna walk through this a uh, little bit or we're good? I mean, we already talked a lot. Uh, we already talked about the general information and the rules, but I'll, yeah, I think it'll be better to start from preparation. Okay, preparation. Okay, good. Yeah. So, both those links that are there, they give you sample practice words for JVB and IVB. So, if you click on the link, you can find some good words there. And yeah, so this list has a hundred words. And after you register, you'll get a list of a thousand words that'll be much more comprehensive than this. So this is how the list will be structured. It categorizes words based on alphabetic order. And it gives you a thousand words. They might seem overwhelming to learn at first, but if you use the dictionary and try to understand why words mean what they mean, that makes things much easier. Uh, and you'll have a similar link for IVB. Regarding books and references, one of the main sources would be Word Power Made, Word Power Made Easy. That's a book that I used in my preparation. So it, the author of that book is Norman Lewis and it sort of organizes studying into a way that makes it much easier to remember words than just memorizing words. It talks a lot about roots, which are, in other words, just components of words. And that's a view of that's a view of learning vocabulary that really helped me because splitting words into uh, into the splitting the words into their components and understanding what each component means, even though it's not applicable for every single word in the English language, it's something that makes especially Greek and Latin words, much words that came from Greek and Latin, much easier to understand. So Word Power Made Easy is a really helpful book. Uh, Reader's Digest, it's there's a there's a word power column in there. So if you uh, if you subscribe for if you subscribe to Reader's Digest, the monthly version, there would be some good words there. And this is something that I can't stress enough. Just reading in general, especially news articles or uh, even books that's extremely helpful to improving your vocabulary because, I mean, as a speller, one of the main objectives that I had while studying vocabulary was clearing the preliminaries test in the Scripps National Spelling Bee. And that's half of it is spelling, half of it is vocabulary. And 
uh, it was very imperative for me to get a good score in the vocabulary section to make it to uh, finals at Scripps. So even though I studied from that perspective, reading books and reading the news, that was extremely helpful because, I mean, both in real life and in vocabulary tests, the words that you're going to encounter are words that you're going to see in context. So reading common books, uh, reading a lot helps. Uh, and also words that are in headlines, even if you don't have the time to read entire news articles, many times words and headlines have uh, good vocabulary words. So that is another thing to keep an eye, keep an eye out for. Uh, there are also other resources. There is a book by Barron's. Uh, there are vocabulary flashcards that are provided um, with the ISBN. And as I've talked about, the online vocabulary game, that's again uh, a very invaluable resource if you are a beginner. Uh, you Yeah, you'd need to have login credentials to access the game, but it has a lot of multiple choice words and it's great for practicing. So that is another thing that's helpful. Vocabulary.com, that's something else that I want to talk about. So it has a few, it has like practice settings for lists of words. And some of them are in a game like uh, in a game like format, but it also has its own dictionary, I guess. Uh, it, it phrases definitions in a much more user-friendly format, and that's what I like about vocabulary.com. So if you are using Merriam-Webster's or Merriam-Webster's unabridged and you're not able to understand one of the definitions because of complex phrasing or something like that, vocabulary.com, it simplifies the definitions and gives you mnemonics, and that's something that Merriam-Webster doesn't necessarily always give you. So that is something that's very helpful about vocabulary.com. And there are many other lists that you can find online, but vocabulary.com is an especially good resource. Yeah. Um, that's great. I think the preparation part of it was the many um, people would be looking for. What was your uh, personal uh, practice of how to prepare? Um, is there some tricks or tips or tricks that you can share? Yeah, so regarding strategy, I already touched up on it. It's mainly having an expansive root knowledge is something that will definitely help you. If you know a lot of roots, that helps you piece together words that you haven't seen before. So that is extremely helpful. And other than that, uh, I have used several resources. Uh, one of them that Scripps used to provide was the consolidated word list. And the majority of the words there are extremely good words that come up both in vocabulary tests and uh, in context. So it's not just having words that makes you successful in vocabulary and spelling, it's understanding the words and understanding why a word is spelled a certain way or why a word means something. Uh, so looking, looking through words with that lens is very helpful. So even like, for example, you have the common word deodorant, uh, and I'm assuming that most of you guys know what that is. Uh, but if you think about it as D plus the word, like DE, the prefix D, and the word odor plus the noun suffix unt, even if you haven't seen that word hypothetically, you'd be able to piece together what it means. So uh, that is extremely helpful in terms of vocabulary. That was a good, very good example. Thank you for that. Um, so forum is open for questions. Any question? We have tried. We have answered some questions that are put on the question panel. Um, so there are some people. There is one now. Uh, Bharati he um, says that I have an old version of Word Power Made Easy. What should I do? So I told her, yeah, use that as an exercise book. But then there are a lot of free online resources too, right? Available. Yeah, there are many online resources available. Uh, I don't think Word Power Made Easy has been updated anytime recently. So if you have a copy of that, then use it. It's very helpful. Oh, that's that's good news. Oh, okay. Anybody else uh, have any questions? If you cannot find the question panel. You can raise um, the okay. Mm, is the list same for spelling and vocabulary? Yes, um, it, the spelling word, word list and vocabulary word list are uh, generally the same, but we do try to maintain 
a separate uh, list. So if you have spelling, doesn't mean that you have the vocabulary list too. Uh, do, 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 okay, I'm going to just go uh, and tell you how to access the game a little bit. Okay, give me one minute. I'm going to end the slideshow. Let me go here. So here, uh, you're going to log in as a parent. So you log in here. Now here is a typical screenshot, okay? I'm going to demonstrate everywhere. If you have already registered, you go to Contest Regionals, um, and then click on View Status for Regional Contest and Download. You can access your 1,000-word list there. It is available in the in the uh, uh, your apparent login. Now, how do we access the games? So here, if you actually see in the parent login, you'll see a games tab. Um, I'll try to log in to my parent account and uh, see whether I can uh, um, show you something. But um, uh, my kids have gone past a lot of stuff, so they are not uh, doing spelling or vocabulary. So I might. I might not have it, but basically what you'll do is that you will be creating the game login in your parent account first. And uh, once you have created the parent account, am I logging in this? Yeah. Uh, or the game login, then you log up and then, so I'll just show you here. Uh, this is my uh, this thing, so I go to game, and then you say create child login. You can also view status for games. It will tell you after you have registered for your uh, spelling or vocabulary. When you come back here on the games tab, you can view the status for games, and it should show that you're, you you have access to uh, spelling or a vocabulary or both games. And then you create a child login. So you create the login. Okay. So you can create one, you create the uh, login out there uh, with the password. Then you log out. Now, using the new child login, you go to the game login and ask your child to log in. And you'll, that's how you'll get access to the game. I think that I've demonstrated it. Uh, should I go study? Where should I go to study? No need. That's a pretty generic question. Can like for yeah, vocabulary? Yeah. I think she's talking about etymology or you know those kind of things. Okay, yeah. So regarding etymology, your best source for that is going to be Merriam-Webster's. If you have unabridged, that's even better. So whenever you search up a word, at least for the majority of words, if you scroll down enough, there will be it'll there there will be a section for the origin of the word. Or uh, I don't know if it's phrased as origin or etymology, but in that section, it'll give you the roots that the word comes from. Generally, I'd recommend studying roots if they are Latin or Greek. Those are most of the good roots, um, but you would have to do a little bit of searching in order to find the earliest form of the root because that's generally more helpful. Okay. This is a question from how do you make sure that they can memorize the words? Is that something that you did? Is that how you, what, how did you make it to make sure that you remember? I would, I would modify that as a, um, instead of memorize, I would say remember a, a, a particular words, meaning and usage and all that. That's some, Tricks there. Yeah. Yeah. So regarding regarding that, well, memorizing words, just having the spellings in front of you and trying to memorize that, that's not really going to do you much. It's it's not going to help you much. So instead, you're I would recommend learning words based on the information uh, that the information that's provided for the word. So again, the example that I used a little earlier was uh, deodorant. So if you search that up you'll find that it comes from 
uh, D plus the word odor, O D O R, and then A N T. So if you understand, that's why the word is spelled that way. Uh, you wouldn't have trouble remembering the spelling of the word. So that is the strategy that I use for the majority of words. Other words simply, they are hard to remember. So since there are so many words in the dictionary, um, try to learn words based on roots and mnemonics for the majority of them. And if a word is just something that you'd have to know, then that's a word that you'd have to memorize. So you'd have to try to segregate words so that most words or the majority of the words you can learn systematically. And the few words that don't really fall into etymological categories, those words you'd have to memorize. Got it. That's a very useful tip. Um, any other questions? For now, uh, Navneet will also be doing the deep dive session um, uh, that is coming up on uh, February 27th. Uh, like I said, you can just register from your parent account and register for the online workshop. So there are many, uh, like he said, there are many resources available. Uh, practice, practice, practice. That is the only way uh, you, you can uh, be sure of yourself as well as uh, perform well. Um, and uh, like we said, we you know work with you from your early uh, ages, right? So you can start now. Uh, don't wait. You know, doesn't mean that you have to get uh, 30 out of 30 or 25 out of 25 on the first uh, um, attempt itself. Um, over a period of time, you'll get to the habit of how to excel uh, that uh, now it did and uh, he reached the scripts uh, national uh, uh, finals um any final words now yeah so this is pretty general so there is no substitute to hard work even if you have all the resources and you know how to study uh, the ultimate key to success is hard work so believe in yourself and work hard and uh study systematically and all of those things will help you in the long run thank you namneet for the wise words